Let's go. Let's go. It's awesome. We're out here on site. We're getting ready to go in the garage and we're getting ready to fix where a cabinet man has accidentally shot a nail through a wire at a customer's home. It just happened to be that we were already working here doing other things. We were scheduled to come back today and then when we get here he's got several other things that he wants us to do but one of them unfortunately is where a cabinet man shot through a switch leg. Now it didn't trip the breaker but it may have tripped the GFCI. Let's go find out. Alright so we made it to the customer's home and this is what we're dealing with. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Alright so the beautiful cabinets. Great job but what happened was if you look right inside there thing is pretty buggered up so let's see if we can zoom in a little bit I think that made it worse there you go so what we're gonna do is we ended up having the cabinets were all done they ended up having to take them off so what we're gonna do is you can see right here where the board will come through thankfully the cabinets in the back are an open face so we're just gonna cut a junction box right here a junction box right here run a small jumper in between and get this problem fixed up all right y'all one thing I do want to stop and talk about really quick are these existing holes so apparently the cabinet guy came in and core drilled this hole and core drilled this hole and was going to stick a piece of two by four behind it and screw through it in order to maybe support his cabinets because they didn't break on a stud. But one thing I didn't understand is that the wire that I had to repair was three inches inside the wall. So let's take this as a learning lesson that once you get through the drywall, stop drilling. He didn't have to core drill for three more inches. There's no reason his drill bit should have even really breached the drywall. And unfortunately, it could have saved this cabinet company about $180 that I had to charge the customer and that ultimately the cabinet company is going to end up having to pay. I'm going to show you something that made this one really interesting is that this is not a normal wall. This is actually not normal spray foam. This is actually inside of a wine cellar. So this has been uh, sprayed with a special probably closed cell foam in order to you know keep the wine cellar cool so this is kind of an interesting job all right y'all so i just got done installing an eight foot led fixture in this basement super excited about the led technology it just makes it easy efficient and you know uh, less maintenance i have not gone back and changed out any of these integrated fixtures since they came out so time will tell as we go further in the game i figured this would be a great time for us to talk about the code of the week every week we're going to have a code article that we memorize and this week it is 210.8 and all you have to remember is gfci anytime you want to learn about gfci protection anywhere in a residence or commercial um, for the most part, it's going to be blanketed under 210.8. So remember, 210.8, GFCI protection. Let's get to it. So we're in the crawl space today, and we're getting ready to install this disc LED fixture. So we're down here in the crawl space, and one thing I want us to be mindful of when we're working in crawl spaces is, is that now lighting is actually required to be GFCI protected as well as the receptacles. It's something that you may not think about, especially if you're in my case and you're doing retroactive work where you're coming back to update or you know, install new lighting, you may not think about having to GFCI protect that circuit. It's very intuitive for us if we're in a damp place or a crawl space to think about GFCI protection for receptacles, but now it's required for lighting. Also, I do want to note if that circuit, say you're doing a new install, and that circuit also goes into an area that requires AFCI protection, you would be required to do both. this off of any circuit as long as it's not part of the laundry kitchen or bathroom one thing that I would recommend and it's actually a law in our state it's a state ordinance that you have a light fixture that has a completely covered dome that's going to keep moisture out it's also going to keep anyone from backing into it and it's going to eliminate the danger of having an open bulb inside of a crawl space
so maybe you all are like me and you have a struggle with ratchet straps and the struggle is real now i do have some in my truck it seems like once they come out of the package it's a struggle after that and we've all had the struggles of putting them together and taking them apart and ratchet straps have their place and i'll always use them but i want to show you a new system that i've come up with for strapping down my ladders to the big truck so let's go ahead and jump over there and take a look at it now so after years of fighting the multicolored ratchet straps having to always wonder if they're tight and wonder if they're down i finally come up with this system here so you can pick these up at lowe's or anywhere your local hardware all they are is u-bolts it comes with the entire apparatus that's ready to go and what i do is i just take it apart and then all i have to do is slip it through part of the ladder. I can slip it through the bottom part, the top part, it really doesn't matter. Slip it through part of the ladder, and then I lock it in like this, and I lock it tight. Now, I never have to wonder if my ladders are going to fly off, if they're strapped down. I don't have to wander around, you know, worry about looking like the clamp that's running around with multicolored ratchet straps, and I know they're locked and secured. It really just makes for a nice, clean look on the truck and not having to have the ratchet straps coming down, you know, down into the bed. All right, y'all, so we're back in the saddle again. We're going to stop by. We're going to spray off the Chevy. And then we're actually heading to a customer's house where it's a dear customer of mine, thankfully, where, you know, he does a little bit of electrical himself. And you'll find customers that do, and that's fine. I think that's great. But he got into a three-way switch, switch switching situation, and he decided that he's in there too far. And when he changed the switches out, it only works when one of them is up or down. So... We know what's going on. You may know what's going on, but if you don't, I'll tune you in. So what happens is typically is that usually if one of the switches will work and the other one won't, or the either one won't work if one of them are up or down, is that either the switch leg or the power in is you know mixed up and it's on the wrong screw. So typically it's a pretty easy fix. We're gonna go in and fix that. And then he also has a light that he wants us to hang outside. I'll try to shoot us some action shots when we get there. We're gonna get out, spray out the Chevy so she's looking clean, get the mud off the ladders. Let's get to it. All right, y'all, so we're out here on this job and we're gonna be changing an exterior light. And this one's really cool. I'm really interested to see what's going on behind it. It's been painted a couple times, but it looks like it's got an interesting lip around it. When I get it down to my hand, I'll give us a clearer shot. I like to. All right, so we got this one down. It was ended up there ended up being a box, and you know it's a 50/50 shot on whether or not you're going to have a box. But thankfully, in this location, we have a box. The uh, fixture is a cool old fixture, and uh, just had an interesting rim on it. I didn't know if we were going to find something really cool inside. And it looked like it was in decent shape. It doesn't owe us anything. It's held on for a long time. And uh, we're going to pop a new one up. I believe the sockets just burn out. We're going to put a new integrated LED and we'll be in action. So let's put it in. Before we hang the new fixture, I got a funny one for you. Inside of this box, they had bonded the fiberglass box with this ground. So instead of whipping it to the fixture, they actually bonded the fiberglass box. I thought you guys would like that. After pulling out of the box, this one ended up not being an integrated fixture, but just a screw type. No big deal. One thing I really thought was interesting is that they did not have an equipment ground connection. You actually just bond the bracket. And from the bracket, when it screws through, it is going to bond some of the other components. I believe most of it is going to be plastic, but some of it is metallic. take a minute and uh, show you guys something that a customer had mine and made it actually holds that plant right th right there it's super sweet it actually hopefully i can do it one hand it actually comes apart into two pieces so you can fold it up it's a really neat plant stand that he built get to meet some really interesting people i want to show you guys another cool thing that the customer's working on here it's actually a throw pillow drawer that you put in your room so when you're done with your throw pillows She's going to put those on like that for handles. So when you're done with your throw pillows at night, before you go to bed, you take them out and in the morning, you put them back on. Sweet. Y'all, we're going to round this week out with the tool review of the week. This week, we are reviewing the Fuel Brushless M18 30 degree framing nailer. This thing is absolutely a beast. It weighs around nine pounds, so it is a little bit heavy, but boy, it has a great sturdy feel to it. It shoots up to three nails a second. It shoots two inch to three and a half inch nails, and it shoots clipped 
or full headed nails. I'm super excited about testing this thing out with you guys. We're going to do some action shots here in just a second. It goes right in with the Milwaukee M18 setup like we're used to having. And it has several modes here for single shot or triple shot. Let's get to it. I have my M18 battery loaded. Let's see what this puppy can do. You turn it on and you can easily switch back and forth in between modes. Have the single shot first. Now with the single shot, you must press and then pull the trigger. Well, that put out a nice shot. This is a full head nail. It also takes clip nails, but boy, that sank it in. Looks like it sank it in about an eighth of an inch. One of the handy things about this framer is that you can actually adjust the depth gauge right here, and it's very stout. I really love the way that this feels. Let's go ahead and let's try the triple shot. So to do it, you just, very simple. And now, instead of having to pull the trigger every time, you literally can hold the trigger down. and it gives a nice solid shot. I have a couple here that didn't sink all the way, but I truly feel like that was user error where I didn't have a really good hold on it. So this is the Fuel Brushless 30 Degree Framing Nail. 